Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars and welcome to another PlayStation review. Today's review is for Barn Finders, but it's just been released, uh, I think it's today on the PlayStation Store, and it is selling in the UK for around £15. Now what is Barn Finders, you may ask? Well, essentially, it's like a simulation game. Uh, we've all seen game, uh, the TV shows out there, things like American Pickers and Storage Wars. This is like a combination of those two TV shows put in a strange, weird, at times bonkers like video game simulation of those uh, of those TV shows. Now, essentially, you play a guy that lives and works on his own property, and you end up travelling around to different locations and picking those locations for valuable items to sell back at your home. Um, now, back at the home where you run your base of operations, there are you have like a PC which you are sent jobs to do, um, and there will at each location there will be specific jobs for you to do that someone will pay you money for. Um, it might be um, collecting a certain piece of a clock or something like that or it might be collected a piece of furniture or something like that but also you're free at these locations to pick them to your heart's content so you will go around and look for valuable items that you can then store in your truck bring back to your property and sell now um, there are things that you can buy to upgrade your property and certainly your shop that you're going to sell your items in um, you know, you've got um, shelving initially, some fairly basic shelving that you can put up to display the items on. Um, and as the game progresses, you will then have a tool that you can buy to upgrade and improve the shelving to make it look a bit nicer, as well as decorating the shop to make it look a bit nicer too. There's also things on your property that you can um, initially buy and upgrade, things like a cleaning station, um, there is a station where you, you find parts for spare vehicles and when you get enough parts you can build that vehicle and sell it on um, there's like a repair station where if you if you find things that need repairing you can then repair them and sell them on for a higher profit so on and so forth and there's other things that you can buy as well so you need to buy like an axe so that you can break down items better break through breakable um, like walls to get you through to secret locations there's lock picks that you can buy uh, so that you'll be able to lock um, certain picks. There's like a headlamp you can buy to look in darker locations because not all the locations you go to will be during the day. Um, there's a shovel you can buy to dig up certain bits of treasure, I suppose, in certain locations. So you've got to travel around to these different locations. You've got to make sure you've got enough money in to buy the fuel to travel to these locations. Um, and so essentially the gameplay loop is you'll get up in the morning, you'll head to a location uh, by following uh, an email on your PC, you'll pick that location, you'll come back home, it'll then be night time, you'll store the, the items that you've brought back, um, you'll take them from the truck and put them in storage, go to bed, wake up the next day, and then you'll display these items that you have collected out on your trips within your shop, and then you need to go to the sign at the front of the shop, open your shop up, and then customers will come in and they will buy items from you. You do have the option to haggle uh, with these customers, and it's a fairly simple, as you can see just then, it's a fairly simple system. There's a slide by, you just click it at the right time, and if it lands in the green zone, you, they will um, offer you a higher price sort of thing. Uh, it's not a particularly difficult thing to, to do. The main problem with this game is like balancing um, the finances, knowing when to buy the right things, because certain maps you're going to need the axe to break things down, certain items, certain locations you're going to need uh, lockpicks, certain locations like a darker locations you're going to need your headlamp, so all these things you have to buy within the game, so you need to kind of make sure you're balancing the money uh, between upgrading your shop, buying new shelving, um, upgrading and buying new things within your property. Um, so that, for example, there was, a, there was a part in the game where I went to an auction, because there are also auctions here in this game. Now, the first auction is pretty much a gimme that you do in the game, um, because your uncle, who kind of follows you around, gives you something like $600 to help you win this auction, which you inevitably do. 
Um, the, but as the auctions go on, you need to make sure you've got enough money to win those auctions. Because if you go into them without enough money, then you're going to have to kind of uh, leave it and come back until you have the right amount of money. Um, and what the game does really, so that you're not really stuck for too long, is locations that you think you've picked for items... There is a strange storyline running through it where there is like a, an alien conspiracy or something like that. Uh, and they'll kind of pop up, it pop up at your old locations and drop items for you to go back and pick. So if you do start running out of money, you can always revisit your old locations and you don't need more fuel to do that. Once you've unlocked that location and, and driven to it, it's, it, you can just return to it whenever you want. And there will inevitably be new items for you to collect and then take back to your shop and sell. So it never really feels like you're completely stuck in the game. Um, occasionally it does feel like you're kind of uh, at a little bit of an impasse until you get enough money so you can get back to um, the auction, for example, and make sure you've got enough money to win that auction. So it's... It's a bit of an oddity, this game. If you like simulation-type games, it's very much in the same vein as things like House Flipper. It's a very chilled-out experience. It's a bit odd. It's a bit weird, this game. Like I said, this strange alien um, um, storyline running through it. And there's there's a couple of, se a couple of times in the game where you kind of... You take this weird drink and then you kind of uh, have visions and uh, all this kind of stuff. It's just a little bit weird. It's, try it's trying to be different. It's trying to be humorous, I guess. Personally, I probably would have preferred a bit more of a straight-up simulation, I suppose. But the game doesn't take itself too seriously. It tries to have fun with it, I suppose. But it is also, at the same time, really quite limited. Now, in the way the game looks, you can see for yourself it ain't anything special. It's very janky. Not particularly great graphics in any way, shape or form. Um, it, it's just not great at all uh, in regards to that. The sound, well, there is no real voice acting on display here. There's like a radio plays in the background that plays like country music constantly, which can be a little bit off-putting, I suppose. So the graphics and the sound are nothing really to write home about. They're at a fairly basic level, and that is really how the game is. It's at a fairly basic level. You need to go into this game with your eyes wide open and kind of understand what you're buying. For what it is, I'm going to give this game a 6 out of 10. It would probably have scored it a little bit higher if it was a little bit less than £10. I do think it is a little bit overpriced. But it is what it is, and just be aware of what you're buying if you do decide to go and purchase this game, guys. So I hope you found this review useful. I'll be back with more content on the channel very, very soon.